Before we delve into the details of Clarion, let's first consider why cognitive architectures may be a worthwhile pursuit. In one sentence, a cognitive architecture may be described as a broadly scoped, domain-generic, computational cognitive model capturing the essential structures, mechanisms, and processes of the mind to be used for a broad, multiple-level, multiple-domain analysis of behavior. We can begin to unpack this definition with an analogy. Just like the architecture of a building defines the overall design and framework of that building, a cognitive architecture defines the overall structure of the mind. More specifically, cognitive architectures provide an initial set of generic assumptions about the componential processes of cognition and their interaction. The processes that are targeted are usually assumed to be relatively invariant across time, domain, and individual. Notably, cognitive architectures present structurally and mechanistically well-defined theories about these processes in the form of computer programs. In that sense, we can say that cognitive architectures are like buildings. They are concrete artifacts structured according to specific, detailed, and functionally motivated designs. Cognitive architectures serve multiple functions. In cognitive science, they provide a framework that facilitates detailed modeling and exploration of various components of the mind. They do this by allowing for the specification of computational models of cognitive mechanisms and processes, and by embodying theories and descriptions of cognition in computer programs. Cognitive architectures may also serve AI in that they provide some kind of infrastructure for building intelligent systems. This infrastructure has the distinction of including a variety of capabilities that are grounded in cognition. On the psychological front, there are two primary reasons why cognitive architectures may help advance understanding. First, they force one to think in terms of mechanistic and process-oriented detail. Second, they force one to think in terms of mechanisms and processes available within a generic model. These two considerations together mean that cognitive architectures may provide deeper explanations of phenomena that are not centered on superficial, high-level features of a task but rather on generic mechanisms of a cognitive agent. As a result, cognitive architectures may lead to unified explanations for a large variety of cognitive data and phenomena. It should be clear that work on cognitive architectures is a big picture enterprise. So it might be worth asking if there is room for such grand theorizing. Insofar as we are interested in developing integrative theories about cognition, we will be forced to advance and test hypotheses relating to deep and unifying principles. Cognitive architectures present a very convenient medium for developing such unified theories. This can be traced back to the fact that cognitive architectures are concrete, extensible artifacts and that they require a high degree of precision and detail. 